some tourist attractions like the Asha Fort and even the Jamestown Lighthouse come to mind because we have a lot of tourists coming in here to take a look at these places. But there's one particular hidden gem that has been in existence for over 100 years. That is the Dio Gratis Photo Studio, which is still running even after 100 years. And today at 3 Entertainment, we're here in Jamestown to find out the backstory of how this brilliant photo studio started, how they've been able to keep the pictures, what has kept them running. Come with me, let's go find out. The Dio Gratis Photo Studio, established in 1922, signified the height founder, J.K. Bruce Van der Poel and Son's aspirations and dreams of what they can achieve with photography. The two spent decades in capturing historic events, architecture and prominent personalities in the Ghanaian history. To present day, it can inarguably said to be one of the oldest photography studios in Africa. Dio Gratis and the dream of the Bruce Van der Poels is succeeded by Kate Tamaklo, granddaughter of J.K. Bruce Van der Poel and daughter of Isaac Hudson Bruce Van der Poel. So we're here at the Dio Gratis photo studio, the oldest photo studio in Africa. And today we're going to get into the history behind the studio. And the best person to help us do that is Mrs. Tamaklo, who knows a whole lot about the studio. Being the third generation, she's here to tell us all the stories. It's been here for over 100 years. What are some of the memorable um, events, especially when it comes to your grandfather and your father managing this entire studio? Some of the memorable events have been when Kwame Nkrumah was taken out of prison, which was not, is not far from the studio. And then also experiencing our independence. That were great moments that my, both my grandfather and my dad experienced. So what of this particular picture? Yes, this, this one includes uh, some of the big six okay. with their lawyer for independence. So that's, yeah, that's J.B. Dankwa and the, the, mm. yes, okay. you see the members of the United Gold Coast Convention. Convention. Wow. So this was taken in 1947? Yeah. Wow. So when you go to other jurisdictions, highly sought after, people pay millions of dollars to get these pictures in their homes. Um, are you open for such um, opportunities or do you have people even coming to say that I want to buy this picture for this much? Yes, we have a lot of people coming in who want copies. You know, but for now we are preserving uh, the quality of, of these prints. Uh, we are willing to sell editions, but not more than a certain number of copies from each of the photos because they are really rare and we don't want them to be lying about probably on the floor and then use it to pick up rubbish. You know, we want people to preserve them, hang them on their wall and appreciate what Ghanaians looked like at the time. Despite the great history and the over 50,000 pictures the studio holds, Kate is worried that Ghanaians haven't showed enough interest in the edifice. This entire photo studio has a beautiful history that should be told. Do you think we've appreciated this edifice enough? Well, I think so far as the Ghanaian economy is concerned, no, Ghana as a whole. I don't think so. The studio is mainly patronized by uh, foreigners who are undergoing their studies abroad, especially those who are studying anthropology. They come by and uh, look for information for their thesis. And if I can help them, yes, I do. And the others are just tourists who are taking a walk through Jamestown and then they walk in and um, we take them around, tell them a bit of about what Ghana was then, you know, before independence and after 1922. In a bid to preserve the stories behind every picture, Kate is still running the photo studio, discovering unprinted pictures on films and glass plates, scanning and digitizing every memory. To Kate, the next five years will be an exciting time for the studio as she also has a succession plan in order to keep the dreams of his predecessors running. What is your long-term plan or vision for this place? Let's say in five, ten years, and do you have plans of passing it on to someone else, uh, maybe a fourth generation? Yes, very much so. I mean, the, if I decide not to pass this on, it will die naturally. You know, So definitely I have a succession plan and I would like to pass this on. 
And also, in the next five years, what I would like to achieve is to have a lot of coffee table books lying around in our embassies abroad, uh, in the other museums that we have in the country, to be able to tell the story. And then also to make this place uh, a one-stop, where people can come in, have their photos taken with some of the old photos in the background, you know, to, so those photos will tell their own story as time goes on.